Good afternoon. We are running about three hours behind thanks to the wonders of modern internet in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I planned on doing this at noon today and being done with it by now, but here we are. Uh, we're back with another Fire Pro Wrestling World Stream, as I call them, you know, Polynarch Pro Wrestling. Uh, these are the chill streams where I basically sit back and let the game take over, and I just talk. Um, I need this a lot. I need this sort of hands-off approach today. Uh, it's been a very stressful couple of weeks, uh, months even. Uh, <laughs> so um, I'm just going to sit back and put on a show and uh, – and, and enjoy some Fire Pro. Uh, yes, Joe, yeah, it's not, Red, White, and Bruised is not a new game. It is the name of my 4th of July card that I have done the last, well, this is the second year of it, because um, this game's only been out about 18 months. So uh, I'm just going to sit back, let the matches play out, talk over them, you know, pretend to be a color commentator, I guess. Uh, it's just a thing I do to, to unwind. We do it once a month live. Uh, you know, I do occasionally pre-record some stuff, but since this is a special occasion, we're going to do it live as if it's uh, being broadcasted. Um, first match on the card is our tag titles. Cedric Alexander and Ricochet going up against G.O.D. out of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Waiting on the match to get closer to starting, and then I'll switch to the game. I don't want to keep the load screen up. That is the beauty of having this switcher here. I can, I can do this. It's had a really frustrating couple of days, especially. Um, just want to unwind a little bit. I'd love to see these uh, two teams in a match together. I feel like Cedric Alexander Ricochet could have a hell of a match with GOD. Trying to get all caught up on the Cup. I didn't to watch the semifinals. I also managed to avoid having the semifinals spoiled for me. Uh, which is hard to do in New Japan since they are in a completely different side of the country. Of the world. And uh, they... Um, Typically, by the time I wake up, the match results are all over wrestling Twitter, so. Is this better? If I bring myself up right here, maybe bring the game down too. So that I find the game. Bring that down a little bit. I'm also not sitting right on top of the mic. I'm sitting a little further back. Let me scoot forward here. But yeah, as I was saying, I've managed to avoid spoilers for the most part on the New Japan Cup. Later today, I'll probably just sprawl out on the couch and watch the semifinals. I would be shocked if uh, they... Uh, have Hiromo Takahashi going over Okada. But the Evil Sonata match is one that looks pretty interesting though, since they're a tag team. 3D on Cedric. I wish the WWE games would make a game that is as fun to use as this is. And as... Uh, Free of bugs as this game is. Like I would like the uh, 2K art style with this style of game. We'll never, we'll never get it. But... Yeah, the like there was just something special about those old. Raw versus SmackDown games, or even the old Nintendo 64 ones. And, like, the only thing they have going for them right now is, is they look fairly good. Uh, unless you're talking about somebody with long hair, or the entire one with long hair. Um, 
Like, don't get me wrong, I don't I don't dislike the Fire Pro look at all, but like it definitely has an old school feel to it. Alexander breaking up the ten, that might have been enough. Double power bomb. I forgot I made this ring for last year's version of this. Until I was getting set up. And I was like, oh that's right, I did make a ring for red, white, and bruised. Honestly, I haven't enjoyed this year's New Japan Cup that much, uh, strictly because so much of the roster isn't available to be used. And they, uh, they have a lot of members of their, of their roster that aren't in Japan right now because of the you know, global pandemic. Another 3D on Cedric. That's, well, that's twice he's taken it. Tama did a really bad job of stopping Ricochet there. He didn't even try. Just watched him walk up and break up the pin. Oh, I love AI so much. Handspring mule kick. 450 centon. Oh, uh, Thomas definitely got that one. Any matches I put up? I don't even remember how long this show is. 10 matches, pretty, pretty standard stuff. As always, I have it set on 150 speed so the matches move a little quicker. Instead of uh, the, the more plotting regular speed. Nice cutter off the top. I say that has to put him away, right? Like that. <laughs> and then the run into each other bit at the end. Oh man. Alright, back to the gym while I get the next match queued up. A good start here. Good start. Avalanche cutter to finish it. GOD retains their tag titles. We got a match evaluation of 92% there. Can't go wrong there. Um, see up next as soon as it gives me control junior heavyweight belt make sure the settings are alright yes they are And then I backed out of the menu instead of going to the match. So I'm on fire today. If it's not technical difficulties, it's just me being bad at things. Try this again. Uh, G.O.D. won the last match. They uh, finished it with a off-the-top rope. Diamond Cutter, or Gun Stun, as uh, Tama Tonga calls it. Uh, up next, we have the Junior Heavyweight title. It's uh, Champion Hiromo Takahashi versus Challenger Chad Gable. I'm going to jump in early. That way we uh, don't miss the start of the match like we did on the last one. Fight. Chad Gable has fallen a long way from where he was two years ago on this little silly wrestling show. He uh, he was the winner of our version of the G1 the first year we did it. And ever since then, he has basically lo just lost and lost and lost and lost. <laughs> um, he uh, lost his title match against AJ Styles. And then in the next year, 2019's uh, what I call Pal Polynerdic Round Robin Special, he uh, 
I don't think he won a single match in his second go round. So he went from champ to losing every match in the tournament. So looking to redeem himself a little bit here in video game form, I guess. Against the uh, human time bomb. Hiromu Takahashi, who has had a career resurgence in real life after coming back from that horrendous broken neck. And Dragon Lee dropped him on his head in that match. Was it 2019? Mid-2019, I think it was. Maybe even 2018. He was gone a long time. It might have been 2018. I'm going to have to look. Two years ago, Hiromu Takahashi broke his neck One, two. <laughs> in a terrible spot. Like, it was bad. Looks like Sonata's coming down to help out. Or black-haired Sonata, not, not the blonde-haired Sonata we all know. Running drop kick. Basement drop kick, as they call it. Double suplex. Gable's out of the ring. Sonata's on the attack. Good thing we have a 20 count here. German suplex into a clutch pin. That was a good move. I love Japanese wrestling. It's so good. Over the head, belly to belly. Overhead, belly to belly, not over the head. Like I said, I'm having a rough day. Speaking has been difficult. Release German suplex. Another release German suplex. Gable with the counter. Romo comes out of the corner kicking now. Valley Driver. Destroyer right in the middle of the ring. Chad Gable's downfall just keeps going. Just keeps falling. Hiromu Takahashi retains. So that's back-to-back -back retained, uh, re yeah, retained titles. Let's get the next one queued up here. Looks like our mixed tag belts are up next. Let me get there. I wish this game's menu system moved faster. So I don't have to kill time talking. Let's see here. As soon as it relinquishes, there we go. This game likes to keep you from being able to move buttons for a little bit. Give me just a moment and I'll have the next match ready to go. We're going to have, where is he? Where is he? This is why I'm glad I can take it away from the screen and do all this off screen. Because sometimes it takes me a minute to find who I'm looking for. So many members of the roster here. All right. There we go. All right, up next, the Polynerg Pro Wrestling Mixed Tag Team Belts, currently held by Cody and Brandy Rhodes in their second reign as Mixed Tag Champs, going up against the Garganos, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae. Fight. Of course, these are called Mixed Tag Belts, but they're really intergender. Um, intergender just doesn't fit in the, the uh, subject line. Uh, Cody and Randy Rhodes, um, AEW. Uh, Cody, the son of Dusty, Dusty Rhodes, brother of Gold Dust. 
Johnny Gargano, um, big star in NXT right now. His wife, Candice LeRae, also a big star in NXT. Uh, Brandy, also an AEW star. Uh, two real life couples. Yeah, I believe Gargano and Kansas, or Kansas, Candice are uh, out of Cleveland. I know Gargano is. Candace, I don't believe, is from Cleveland. Yep, Cleveland native. Seems like a really cool dude. Plays a really obnoxious bad guy. Him and Candace have been amazing as uh, heels over in NXT right now. It's so funny though, because they're so likable people and so dorky and nerdy, and then they're playing bad guys, and it's like, you know, if you like, you know who they are, it's like this, this just doesn't fit. I had that observation when I was watching um, last night. I watched Wednesday's NXT, the uh, first part of the NXT Great American Bash, and. Uh, the opening match of the show was four women that are all super nerdy and um, a couple of them actually live stream video games on the regular it's like you all are dorks we know this yeah he's been faced for as long as I've known who he is too so like them, them turning him heel the, this year was, was kind of an unexpected thing uh, I think the same for Candace. I think she's been faced her entire career as far as I know as well. At least the portion of it I'm aware of. So them being bad guys is interesting. Oh, you did, Joe? Like you like, like, like you know them know them? Is that what you're saying? I mean, I'm assuming if you filmed this comeback package, you, you at least met them. They seem like legitimately cool people. I, I've, I've adored both of them for the longest time. Yeah, he's a... It's a shame what happened with Chikara. Them closing their doors amidst all the, uh, the impropriety and sexual misconduct. I mean, obviously, it's a shame that the misconduct happened more than anything, but Chikara closing their doors. I wonder if they'll be back under new ownership and management. Double drop kick on Candice. Okay, the women are legal now. Yeah, the only wrestler I have ever known personally is uh, Dave Christ. And that's because we were in elementary school together. I, I haven't known him since then. Like, I don't, uh, I've never talked, never talked to him since elementary school. So I don't even know if that qualifies as knowing him. But we did go to elementary school together. And even then, I knew him so him personally as a second grader that I didn't even know he had a little brother. Of course, he also has been out at the recent speaking out thing. Holy crap, Joe. That is cool. some cool stuff. I, I learn new stuff about you all the time. Oh, Kevin Nash, wow. I imagine that dude's enormous in person, height-wise.
Of course, the camera cut away from whatever big move Candace just hit. <laughs> Kevin Dunn must be working the camera today. It's been six months, and I still laugh about them cutting away from Edge's return spear at the Royal Rumble this year. Dude hasn't been seen on TV in nine years. Runs down to the ring. Dolph Ziggler feeds him for a spear, and then they cut away. Huh. Joe, that is cool. I, I appreciate the hell out of that. Like, that is such a cool thing you did. Because, uh, like, I've spent years thinking about, like, trying to become a referee. Because I'm not athletic at all, and I'm, and I'm too old to try. Um, you know, I, I mean, I know DDP was about my age when he started wrestling. But I don't, I, I don't have the, the athletic ability to do it. No way in hell. So I thought about, you know, getting trained up to be a referee. But the, uh, for years where I worked nights, there was just no way I could do it. And then now it's just, it just seems implausible to add another thing to my list of things I'm trying to do. Yeah, isn't that the case? Don't you always, like, hindsight being 2020, you don't really appreciate what was in front of you until, until it's passed? Nice uh, avalanche suplex into a roll up. Cody Rhodes pending candlestick array. Another title retained. Seems to be the theme of the show so far. Cody with that sneaky roll-up win. He misses a lot in this game. It's all about the AI. All right, up next, as soon as the game gives me control, we have the TV title, the internet title, the Twitch title, the stream title, whatever you want to call it. I just call it the TV title because that's the standard. You know, so many, so many organizations have had television championships. NWA, WCW. I think NWA still has one. <laughs> Cancel the network. <laughs> Come on, we we know that the there is no more powerful move in professional wrestling than the surprise roll up. Nothing beats the surprise roll up. All right, this one is a bit of a uh, a dream match that people want to see happen. But one of the men involved keeps saying it never will happen. So we're going to do it here. Um, and that is Brock Lesnar going after Matt Riddle, the TV champion. Riddle wants to fight Lesnar. Lesnar keeps saying it'll never happen. I don't use Lesnar often just because I get tired of seeing him on TV for real. So uh, this is a rare appearance. If this was reality, it would cost me so much money <laughs> just to have him here. Yeah, old Matt Riddle. His situation's interesting because he's another guy who was uh, had allegations pointed at him, but uh, him and his wife have filed documents that seem to say that it's it's a case of harassment and someone trying to ruin him. So I don't know what to make of that one. Um, he still seems to have a job. He was on SmackDown last night from what I read. Um, hell, the week before he beat AJ Styles. So WWE still seems to have faith in him, unlike so many others that they've suspended and or fired. I would kill to see Matt Riddle and Brock Lesnar go out for real. No, well, yeah, for real would be cool too, since they're both mixed martial artists. But in the ring, in reality, I would love to see this match. Maybe if Riddle gets to be a big enough star, Brock will be willing to, to do it. 
Yeah, yeah. This year has been so bad. In so many ways, not just in wrestling, obviously. Um, yeah, Corona has done a number. And then now, like, you know, we have all the, the confirmed cases of uh, Corona amongst WWE personalities. But it's like, maybe they ought to stop. I have to stop for a little bit, but they won't. AEW won't either. I think if any of them, AEW has the biggest chance of stopping, but they also have the most to lose by stopping. I really appreciate New Japan put it going on hiatus for three months or whatever it was. That that was that was a class move. New Japan starred them all of them. They they just took a break, got rested up. And they've been doing empty arena stuff since they came back. I will say, if Riddle wins with a top rope splash, I'm going to be disappointed. That is not a uh, top tier finisher to a match. But then again, not that long ago, Kenny Omega beat. Uh, no, Kofi Kingston beat Kenny Omega with a running knee, so. F5 on Riddle. One F5 puts Riddle away. Honestly, if they did the match today, that's probably exactly how it would end, too. Because Brock's going to be like, pay me. So we got our first new champ. Brock Lesnar with the television title. I got to uh, do some housekeeping here real quick. What's next? Okay, women's tag titles. This one is uh is interesting because it uh the champion team is one I just threw together because I needed a team. Um, Tennille Dashwood and formerly Emma, and uh, I know Brock getting a squash victory. That's that was that's completely unexpected. Um, I actually. When I first started doing these streams, I, uh, I, uh, he was the IWGP champion on here because I didn't have, I hadn't done and done the created belts yet. So I was just using the, the New Japan belts. And Brock was the champion. And I was like, oh no, he's going to be the champion forever. But he lost almost immediately. So it worked out. Um, give me a second to get the match together. going to be the thrown together tag champs of thrown together tag champs of Dashwood and Chris Statlander Chris Statlander being an up and comer in A and AEW uh, who was on the rise until she blew out her knee earlier this year and now she's off um Wrestling is definitely cursed in 2020. And the challengers are Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart, a team seemingly thrown together out of nowhere in NXT that has had some pretty quality matches together. And, of course, Tegan is now the number one contender uh, in NXT for Io Shirai's title. So that, that that's going to be a hell of a match. Tegan Knox has been one of my favorites since she was on uh, back when What Culture had their uh, YouTube wrestling show. Uh, she was Nixon Newell over there and uh, absolutely adored her, her ring work. So I am uh, excited to see her go after Io Shirai, one of the best in the world. I predict good things. Of course, Tegan famously was the cursed uh, Mae Young Classic participant who blew out her knee in the first tournament and then blew out her knee in the second tournament. So... Uh, the other knee in the second tournament. So she has had a rough go. That's why I'm excited to see her be the number one contender. I don't think she's going to take the belt off EO. They just put it on EO um, a month ago, so I don't see that happening, but it could be entertaining nonetheless. Yeah. Knee injuries in wrestling, man. They're just... They're, 
They go together like peanut butter and jelly, it feels like. Everyone always blowing their knees out. I haven't had the pleasure of doing it myself, but I, I, I have friends that have blown their knees out and they say it's terrible. Um, in high school, my neighbor was playing basketball in my front yard or in my driveway while I mowed the yard and I uh, turned around and his uh, knee essentially looked like it was backwards. I turned around, he was laying on the ground and his kneecap was kind of like off to the side, almost on the back and it was terrible. Um, he effed his knee up something good. Playing basketball in my driveway. Speaking of knees, <laughs> Tineo goes for knocks his knee. That low drop kick. Gotta watch that. about ordering tacos for this while this match is going on. I think like once we get closer to the main event, I might I might door dash myself some tacos. I'm glad the internet's working though, Joe. This morning it was so frustrating. You know, like we didn't get to do a movie Thursday night because the internet was bad. And then Friday I streamed a little bit, but then when I went to record the podcast, the fireworks kept me from recording because there was just too many of them. And my neighborhood loves the mortar style fireworks that just rattles your windows. And, uh, and then this morning I record the podcast, go to upload it, and it took over an hour, almost an hour and a half to upload the podcast. And then when I tried to stream, my internet speed was uh, like seven. It was like seven over four, like seven, what, excuse me, seven down, four up. And uh, I couldn't even stream the countdown animation at the beginning of the stream. Like it, it just kept buffering and buffering and buffering. So I took a nap uh, before we did Animal Crossing. I was very frustrated today. Last several days. But I know when I'm frustrated and the internet's up and running, I can always do Fire Pro because it's so low energy, hands-free for the most part. The only thing that would make it better would be if I could preload the card, you know, just match one, match two, match three, match four, so on. And then that way it would just roll match to match to match. That would, I, I keep wanting a game to do that again. You know, there is a promoter mode on this game, but it's uh, very limited. And there is also like the GM modes in the 2K games, but they're also limited in their own way. Shiniest wizard, is it gonna be enough? Do we have new champs? Nope. Come on, Keegan, get her. Ah. Fresh women in each corner. Shotzi's freaking crazy. I don't know if you've ever watched her wrestle. Uh, she did an a, a off-the-top dive two or three weeks ago that I thought she killed herself because the way she landed. She landed on the floor on like high up on her shoulders and back of her head. Busting out the cutters one after the other. <laughs> Diving Centon, is it gonna be enough to put Tanil away? I haven't seen Tanil wrestle in forever. I know she had like a lengthy period where she, I think she has a. Um, real bad eczema or, or psoriasis or whatever like her, but she had like a, a skin condition that kept her out of the ring for a while um, I'm not even sure where she wrestles anymore is it it might be impact it might be impact
Statlander with the the pin there on uh on Tegan. We wheelbarrow driver with for the win. Another retained title. Where is he wrestling at now? See, I, miss, I think they missed the boat with her. They could have had her be part of the Iconics. Because she's Australian, just like Peyton Royce and, and um, Billy Kay. Where's she currently wrestling at? I guess she's technically an impact wrestler right now. Um, but they speak about it in past tense, so I don't know. I don't know. She might be. Who knows? All right. So up next. Ah, the six man. The trios titles. Currently held by LIJ out of uh, New Japan. Oh, no, excuse me. Those are the challengers. Uh, it's currently held by British Strong Style. Pete Dunn, Tyler Bate, Trent Seven. Their challengers are LIJ out of New Japan. Uh, we're giving them Evil. And... Sonata... And Shingo Takagi. We'll bring Tiger Hattori in as the ref on this one. Make sure my settings are all correct. I set the difficulty to 10 so that way the, the, the AI is better. Uh, and then the speed to 150 so it has to move faster. We're on our sixth match. We're in the back half of the show now. We have a women's title match, an intercontinental title match, a number one contender steel cage match, and a world title match to go. So. Here's hoping computer uh, New Japan ref Tiger Hattori doesn't show the New Japan wrestlers. Hey, <laughs> uh, Bit of favoritism. I love the tumble out of the ring when it happens. It's just steel chairs everywhere. Of course, no DQ for hitting someone with a chair in this, uh, in, in any of these matches. You get DQ'd for holding a chair too long, though. Just don't use it. Or, or rather, you don't get DQ'd for using the chair. You get DQ'd for holding it for too long. Um, the rules here are silly. But isn't professional wrestling silly in its own right? Knee drop kick, man. Speaking of knee injuries earlier, every time I see someone take a hit to the knee like that, I cringe. Like, it's just like, oh! Nothing worse than watching a knee bend the wrong way. Crazy roll up. Only for a one count, though. A lot of wasted effort. Though. Trent with the press slam. Tags in Pete. Sonata tags in Shikagi. Shikagi. Shingo Takagi. Good lord. I think I do need to eat. Like, my energy levels are dropping, and so is my ability to speak English or Japanese. Shikagi. Tingo Shikagi. Hell, man. What the hell's wrong with me? Magic killer. Trying to state the magic killer on the floor. Oh, almost a count out. That was close. 19 count. I'm 
pretty sure I'm gonna do most of the round robin classic, round robin special, excuse me. Uh, this year is gonna be pre-recorded since I have the ability to record it off stream. I think I'm gonna do most of the days. Um, not live. Might do the finals live depending on uh, where we are um, in the tournament. Because sometimes the turn round robin tournaments get blown out, you know? You end up with a guy who wins all the matches and nobody else is even close. Um, but uh, I do love a good round robin tournament, so I can't resist doing another one. We're almost. I don't know. I honestly don't know if New Japan is going to do the. Uh, the G1 this, this fall. I really don't. Um, or when they are going to do it, are they, are they going to do it later? Is it going to be a smaller field? You know, everything's up in the air. But the G1 Climax is one of my favorite tournaments in professional wrestling because it's that, you know, big round robin style tournament. Uh, last year I was a little disappointed because they did it in a single single bracket format. I love having an A and B bracket, so that way you get a champion from A and a champion from B, and, you know, they face each other in a singles match. Um, last year, New Japan just did a single big tournament. It was, like, the biggest field they've ever done, but they did it as a single bracket. Uh, I, I prefer the, the dual bracket. Uh, so this year, we ext I extended the, the format uh, to... 10 men per bracket instead of 8. So there'll be more matches. That's another reason why I'm not doing it live because it is a lot of live streaming to do a 20-man you know, round-robin tournament. Um, so that'll be coming next. Uh, hopefully, to ha I hope to start recording it soon and then um, I know Bushi's coming out to help the LIJ guys. Um, someone's about to get misted. Possibly. Way to break the German suplex mid throw. Um, but typical of these fire pro streams, I you know have a mixture of American and Japanese wrestlers, and you know um, I don't know if I have any European wrestlers in this year. I need to look. At it. Well, I guess I guess Neville Pac. He's British technically, so there's a European wrestler there. Uh, he won last year's uh, cup, so he's in it again this year as the champion from the previous year. Um, a little inside baseball, I do that every time I do the, uh, the tournament. The winner and runner-up automatically granted. Uh, I did not even see how that match ended. I just seen the pinfall. L.I.J. holding the trio's belt. Which is good, I guess, because a member of British Strong Style, I believe it's Tyler Bate, um, another individual who has allegations brought up against him. Um, yeah, Pete Dunn ate the pin on um, Sonata's finisher, the Hawaiian Crusher, I think they called it. Um, so, you know... Pretty strong style, dropped their belts. I think they, I don't believe they'd ever defended them. I think they won them on the last card and now have dropped them on the next one. What's next? Women's title match, I believe? Yes, yes, yes it is. So this one, I gotta change the rules up a little bit. The women's belt currently held by Tony Storm. I believe this is her first reign on our show. She's going to get a, a little bit of a rematch. Because on the last show we did, we did a uh, multi-woman match, multi-woman elimination match at the end of that elimination uh, match. The last remaining woman was Tony Storm, but she survived via... Um, count out which I don't like to see a title one via count out wherever possible I try not to do that so I'm going to give her the woman that was counted out Hikaru Shida of AEW we're going to give her a two out of three falls no count out match 
to make sure we get complete and total fairness here. There's going to be no... So play Tornado Lumber. Okay. All right. Now, there'll still be run-ins, possibly, so we could see that. So, let's get into it. Two out of three falls. Um, of course, damage from the previous fall or falls carries over. So, oftentimes, uh, fall two and three come real quick. Um, in fact, I think the first one of these I ever did was Kenny Omega versus Austin Aries, and the second fall was, like, immediate. They beat the crap out of each other for like 20 minutes and then the second fall happened within like two minutes um, the first move that was hit that had a pin combination to it was the end of the match so tony storm of course excellent wrestler over in nxt uk um hikaru shida currently the aew women's champion an amazing woman out of japan um, I would like to see Hikaru Shida and Asuka, or Hikaru Shida and Io Shirai someday. Who knows if we ever will. This is going on. No disrespect to the ladies. I'm going to go ahead and order, order uh, I guess, dinner. I mean, it's 4 o'clock. By the time it gets here, it'll probably be closer to 5. Almost already, almost the first fall. Crazy. Right, I won't order it just yet. I'll have it ready to order. That way, when the show's over or the main event's almost done or whatever, I will. Uh... I will uh, pull the trigger on ordering food. Um, I'm laughing at the, uh, the Tony Storm hip wiggle. So silly. I wish the game allowed for uh, Falls Count Anywhere matches. Oh, she's stealing Tony's pile driver. Hikaru Shida with the stolen pile driver finisher. And the double knees to the face. Too close to the ropes, though. Zero. I do believe that is what Tony calls that particular neck breaker that Okada also uses. Next arm trap uh, triangle choke there. I feel like Tony's working heel here. She definitely seems to be working heel. <laughs> Falcon Arrow. Sheeta with the first fall. 11 minutes, 8 seconds. Get the next fall going here. Alright, next up. Reset. Start the next fall. I wish they could do it without the... The... Uh, Fading to black, coming back up. Fight. I'm gonna 
if she hits the Falcon Arrow immediately, that'd be hilarious. Tiring up in the trio well and kicking the crap out of Rebellion. Just right to the guts. Tony Storm with the pile driver. And a splash. Too close to the ropes though. That's not no way that's gonna work. Falcon Arrow, two minutes in. Thought it was it. Two out of three falls matches amuse me in real life because like you almost never see it. Running knee to the face ended it in less than three minutes. We have a new champ. As predicted. Um, you know, the game very often does uh, two out of three falls like that. Just boom, boom, two falls, it's over. But when you see a two out of three falls match in the real world, in real wrestling, um, they... Uh, they almost never end at the second fall. Like, I can't recall the last time I've seen a two out of three falls gut match go two straight falls. Um, I'd have to look into it to see the last time it happened, but it's so rare. What is next? The Intercontinental title match is up next. So let me fix the settings. Our Intercontinental Champion is uh, Kazuchika Okada out of New Japan. And earlier in the week, I posted a video that I pre-recorded. Um, we did a eight-man elimination gauntlet-style match that I pre-recorded and posted on polynardic.com where, you know, everything goes. And in that... In that tournament, or in that Royal Rumble, or Royal Rumble, in that gauntlet style battle royal, Neville walked out the number one contender to Okada's Intercontinental title. Neville, Pac, whatever you know him as. Uh, he's Neville in the game, so I, I can't resist calling him Neville. Um, I have downloaded a version of him or edited the version of him that I have to be Pac. In fact, I think Neville is a better name than Pac. I don't know why. Um, I guess that's arguable. Um, Fight. Neville, as we discussed earlier, is uh, the reigning holder of the Polynardic Round Robin Special Cup. Uh, he turned that into a world title victory, but has since dropped the title. I believe he dropped it to Kofi Kingston earlier in the year. I'd have to go back and look at the the title lineage, but I'm pretty sure that's where Kofi won the belt from, was Neville. Kofi, of course, dropped it eventually to Kenny Omega, who in turn dropped it to Kota Ibushi, our current champion. Kota will be facing Seth Rollins in the main event tonight, this afternoon. Um... Seth Rollins won the other piece of wrestling content I did this week. I did a 32-man tournament that took about two hours to complete. And uh, Seth was the winner of that. I forget who he beat in the end. This is another match that I would love to see book for real. Like when, when Neville left the WWE and set out the rest of his contract, I kept hoping he'd sign with New Japan. He went to Dragon's Gate instead. Um, I wanted him to go to New Japan. I wanted him to be a member of Bullet Club. I wanted him to face Okada. Like that was just like what I wanted almost more than anything in wrestling was to see Neville go to New Japan and fight Okada. 
Um, instead, uh, Kenta went to New Japan. Uh, former Hideo Itami. Nice German suplex over the top rope. Landing on his face on the ring apron, which would hurt. Like, oh, I can't imagine how bad that would hurt. See, I told you Okada uses that same neck breaker. Um, no, Okada versus Neville would be so good. I think Okada versus Neville would be on the level of Okada versus Omega. Um, also, Pac versus, I keep calling him Neville, but Pac versus uh, Will Ospreay would be pretty damn good. Five and cross body. I don't think he's going to win with that. Though. Came close. Almost proved me wrong. Okada has been our most dominant. Up, oh, Rainmaker. Not enough, though. Um, Okada has hands down been our most dominant Intercontinental Champion on this silly little video game wrestling show. He has just been unstoppable as a champ. I'm gonna have. To, I'd like. I'd literally have to go back and look at the archives to see when he won it. And, all the people he's beaten because it's I've thrown some stuff at him and he's he keeps winning um, wasn't that long ago he beat Matt Riddle and Adam Page he's been winning with that hold a lot in the New Japan Cup I guess the Okada lock um, oh the Brutalizer I don't think it's gonna be enough. I think he's gonna, yeah, he got. He didn't get to the ropes, but he was about to. Um, Phoenix Splash. As I said, way too close to the ropes there. Um, he's gonna lock that submission in again. I don't know if it's gonna be enough. Gotta work the neck a little bit more, I guess. Kind of gonna fly with a missile drop kick. Um, I do need to watch the New Japan Cup today. Probably will right after this while I eat my, my dinner. Um, but yeah, Okada has had a, a hell of a run as our Intercontinental Champion. Both these men will meet again in the uh, round robin tournament as well. They're both in A bracket. And per usual, if, um, you know, obviously one man or the other will be the Intercontinental Champion. Anybody who beats them during the tournament will get a shot at whatever title they're holding. That's just how we do it. Uh, Kota Ibushi and Seth Rollins are not in the tournament, so that's not an issue for them. Nice spike Rana there. And then Enziguri. Man, I want to see these two guys wrestle for real. Nice uh, springboard moonsault. Tombstone. Nope. Yeah, tombstone on the outside. Just not the, not the man you expected to hit it. That over the knee neck breaker. Some very Okada behavior right there. Jumping, turning, tombstone pile driver on the floor. Not a move I'd trust a lot of men to hit me with. Aw, oh, come on, not like that. Okay, phew. That's close. I don't know if the belt would have changed hands. I don't know if that game's programmed like that or not. German into the lock and Pock taps. Just in time for MJF to show up and stare, stare from the stage. <laughs> I like the interference showing up that late. <laughs> well, that tickled me. Okada continues to be a dominant Intercontinental Champion. We'll roll into the tournament. Uh, I have it set to 150 so that it is faster. That way it doesn't take three hours to do 10 matches. Um... 
150. So let's, uh, I gotta go back out here. I gotta go to the, um, the cage match for the next match. I wish I could do all these from one screen. That is one of the things that, um, I wish Fire Pro would implement, would be a, uh, a, uh, ability to change match types and whatnot from one menu. Needing to back out and change everything drives me nuts. Um, level 10 difficulty. Speed to 150. Yeah, you know what? That's, that's probably not a bad idea. One that just uh, literally just says, these are the rule settings. This is what we're doing. I'll have to write that up and put it in. Um, let me get the next match set up. I hadn't thought about doing that command, Joe, until I, uh, until you just said it. Cause I, you know, I do these live streams once a month. So, but that's a good, uh, good point, Joe. Good point. All right. Getting the next match set up. Be ready in just a second. All right. This is a steel cage match. Oh, wait. I need to... Yeah, good point. Good, uh, welcome, Polo. I answered your question, but I didn't say hello. <laughs> Let me... Um, I messed up and didn't adjust the match settings. I don't want it to be an escape match. I want it to be pinfall. So I need to set the win condition to a three count. Actually, pinfall only. Oh, we can put weapons in the cage? We're putting weapons in the cage. Because why not? Why not put weapons in the cage when you have options to put weapons in the cage? Number one contenders match born out of some drama that happened on Twitter in the last uh, month or so Tommaso Ciampa versus Randy Orton um, pinfall only to win the match and I hate the table piece I hate the table piece so much as a weapon I wish I could pick my weapons and never include it ever um, winner of this match will face the winner of the Seth Rollins Kota Ibushi match which is, which is next after this uh, but yes uh Yes, exactly. This whole this whole thing is born out of the whole leg slap controversy on uh, on Twitter, which was hilarious, and by all accounts um, was uh, something Vince McMahon was not happy with, because he has no intentions of, of putting Champa and Orton in the ring together. So why should they be arguing on Twitter? Um, man, I can't wait for Vince to retire. Uh, <laughs> the uh, so when I saw that, I knew immediately, there's our number one contenders match. Um, so we have NXT versus WWE Old Timer. And uh, we'll see how this goes. This build of Tommaso Ciampa isn't the greatest. It, uh, it loses a lot. I need to uh, try to find a better one, but this is the best looking Tommaso Ciampa I have found. Um, right now I have the problem of so many people are using DLC that I haven't purchased uh, to create wrestlers so like it, it, it neutered my roster a little bit like I lost two thirds of New Day when a uh, new DLC came out and it uh, they lost a lot like um, both Big E and Kofi lost a lot of their design but they literally lost their heads like the models have no heads and are therefore unusable um so I need to find a Champa that is both stronger in the ring and uh, looks usable. Just kicked him in the dick. Um, that's a different version of the punt than Randy Orton usually uses. 
I love the kendo sticks, baseball bat, and table piece in the ring, and nobody's using them. Because they're not programmed to go after them, I guess. They don't uh, have that part of the AI. Oh, Orton missed the RKO. Every time, oh, then he counters with a gorilla press into an RKO, so kind of made up for it a little bit. Every time he misses it in game, I think at the time, way back in the day when he went for it on uh, Chris Jericho. I can't remember who Jericho had in the Lion Tame or Walls of Jericho, but Orton went for it and missed, and I have laughed about it for a decade. Um, 15 years-ish. There, he missed it again, just for me. It's like he, it's like he heard me saying it. I'm glad you were privy to that, uh, that, uh, back and forth, Joe. Orton with the RKO. Looks like the ref was spanking him there, like smacking him on the butt to count the pinfall. <laughs> We'll have to talk to Chelsea about not touching Randy Orton's butt. Repeated European uppercuts. Chompa with the knee to the back, followed with a diving knee to the back. I imagine having someone land full force on your kidneys with their knee would suck. Into the cage. No submissions in this match. Pinfall only, man. I thought Ciampa was going to go for the RKO for a second. Ciampa with the win in the middle of the ring. Tommaso Ciampa is our number one contender. I saw him tweeting the other day about how the uh, New Japan style, or not the New Japan, the NXT style has no sustainability. Um, and he may not be wrong. Uh, they are... Uh, pretty hard on their bodies all right main event time this is a show went pretty quickly just just over an hour and 15 minutes right now the world title currently held by Kota Ibushi number one contender as I said won a 32-man tournament earlier in the week I just have to find him because we have a big list of names here. Do I have... I do. I like white and gold. Um, oh, white and gold. And for this main event, I'll slow it down to 125. Yeah, I know. That's, that's the thing. Like, I understand what Orton was saying. Um about it not being sustainable, but like also anyone who hasn't, you know, in like an Orton's case, isn't in the business the way he was like, y you gotta be seen, you know, you gotta, you gotta do the thing that gets your attention. Um, here we go. I missed the, uh, the opening bell, but here we go. Give up. White and gold Seth, the Monday night Messiah against Kota Ibushi. See, I dropped it down to 125, and it, this feels like a snail's pace to me. I wish there was more precise settings. Like a 130, maybe. It might be better. I, I gather Polo didn't enjoy the, the high-speed stylings of Fiber Pro Wrestling. But this just feels so slow after watching it at 150. Um, they, uh... 
I used to always do it at 125, and then I found 150 to be more my speed. Um, the NXT guys, I'm all over the place. The NXT guys have to be noticed. They have to make it to the top. They have to do the thing that gets people behind them. But I, I do worry about them tearing their bodies up, like all the apron spots and stuff and, and stuff like that. Like, I want people to have as long a career as possible. I don't want it to be like the NFL where like a running back like might have a five-year career. That's it. You know, like it's like I'm for a, a more uh, reduced schedule. I think the WWE schedule is terrible. Uh -huh. I think it, it's horrible on their body. Yeah, the hardest part of the ring, like they always say. Um, I love that that's been memed to death, to death now, that like we hear it so often in the WWE and AEW. Uh, I don't think they say it too much in New Japan. They don't call it out in New Japan. I noticed that New Japan's uh, apron is wider, too. Um, that they, they don't call it the hardest part of the ring as much, but... Good lord, I think we all understand that now. That the apron is the hardest part of the ring. I remember Jericho saying that the uh, the apron powerbomb into the edge of it is terrible. Like, it, it hurts. He took that one from Kevin Owens. And... Oh yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've heard him say it in AEW. New Japan, I think, is the only place I haven't heard Kelly. I don't think Kevin Kelly has said it. He might have. Oh, man. Kamagoye right in the face, and Seth just no, so, no sells it. Good spike Rana. Side of matches in NXT slash WWE back in the day when he was in the original or the only Cruiserweight Classic. I don't know why they. I mean, I know Corona probably has a lot to do with it this year, but like it's been a while since they've had a tournament show. You know, they, they didn't do a May Young Classic last year. They, uh, it's been three years since they did the Cruiserweight Classic. I like tournaments. I don't know what it is like. Maybe it's the sport aspect of it. Oh, pedigree on Coda. That gonna be enough. Yeah. A weird suplex into a roll up. That I do believe is the move that uh, Seth Rollins won the, uh, the tournament with. He won his number one contendership with that cradle suplex. I thought 205 Live was still going. I, I don't watch it. I never have. I've watched, like, specific matches. Like, uh, when Buddy Murphy, Ali, and Cedric Alexander were tearing it down. I, I've watched those matches. But I've, I've never been a big fan of 205 Live by itself. I think... Call me crazy. I don't think the Cruiserweights needed their own show. Um, I, don't, I don't think they need their own show. They need to be better incorporated into the... Really? That was the end? I didn't even see the finish. I was so busy babbling. Oh, no, man. I think anyone who thinks it's... Uh, oh, he got him with the blackout. Okay. So, Seth Rollins is our new champ. We get Seth Rollins versus... Um, we get Seth Rollins versus... I'll get it out eventually. Seth Rollins versus Tommaso Ciampa at our next show sometime in August. I'm going to spend the rest of July doing the uh, the round robin tournament. Um, but that'll be our main event the next time we get together with the live thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. with oh, When Enzo was the Cruiserweight champion, I was so sad. I was so sad. Joe, you have no idea. Um, I thought Cass had potential and Enzo should have just been a mouthpiece. Enzo had no business in the ring. I say that as someone who's not a wrestler. Um, as a fan, I feel that Enzo Amore did not need to be wrestling. He certainly didn't need to be taking the cruiserweight belt off of Neville. Um, although that did lead to Neville leaving, so I guess something good came out of it. Um, 
I'm going to sign off now, though. Uh, thank you for sitting here with me, Joe, and, and BSing while I watched my wrestling happen. Uh, I'm going to order myself some dinner, and uh, I might be back later tonight with something. I, I don't really have any plans for the evening. Um, I'm certainly not going to go out and see fireworks, given the state of the world and my current condition. Um, so I will be home playing video games, reading, stuff like that. Um, but thank you for, for being here. Yeah, Sky High, I'm signing off for a little while. Um, going to take a break, get some dinner, watch some things, and then I might be back later tonight. I know where you're at, Sky High, it's probably the middle of the morning. Uh, but we'll be back later, um, with something else. Thank you for watching. As always, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Reddit, Discord, polynerdic.com, YouTube, Twitch, Patreon, and Coffee. Those are all the places, all the places that you can see right here in the chat um, that you can find me. I'll be back later today with something. I'll, I'll have to figure something out. Yeah, good info dump right at the end, right, Joe? Thank you for joining me. I'll see you around. Thank <laughs> you.